In this video, I'm going to show you three great licks used by all the blues guitar legends. So if you want to play them too, then stay tuned. Hey there, this is James for James Shipway Guitar and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to play three essential minor pentatonic blues licks which we hear in the playing of all the great blues players. Clapton, Stevie Ray Vaughan, BB King and so on. Before we jump in and look at these licks, let's just check out the scale shapes that these licks are coming from. Knowing these will really mean you can maximise the benefits of knowing these licks and it will really help you to use them effectively in your playing. So the first shape that I'm going to use when I play these licks is A minor pentatonic shape one played down at the fifth fret. If you need a hand learning this scale or you haven't seen it before, you can click on this box right here and it will take you to my essential scale video where I take you step by step through this scale. So just a brief reminder on the scale shape, here it is, we play five to eight on the E string, five to seven on the A string, five to seven on the D string, five to seven on the G string, five to eight on the B string, and five to eight on the top E. So click back to that other video if you need a hand learning that one. The other shape that I'm gonna use a lot in these licks is this sliding minor pentatonic scale, which is really cool because it just extends the basic pattern, and we get a few higher notes, and there's some really tasty bends and some great licks up there. So again, if you haven't seen this one before, click on this box, it will take you back to that video and I'll take you step by step through that shape. But here's just a brief reminder of that shape if you have seen it. It starts off the same. It's five to eight on the E string, five to seven on the A string, and the D string. On the G string, we're gonna play three notes. We're gonna play five, seven, and nine. I'll use my second finger for that position shift. And then it's eight to 10 on the B string and eight to 10 on the top E string. So now we've had a reminder on these scale shapes, let's jump in and look at these three licks. Here's lick one. If there's one great blues lick you need to know, then it's probably this one. It works in all sorts of different places than the 12 bar blues. All the greats play it. It's just a must know blues lick. Let's check it out. I'm starting off in shape one down here and I'm bending up the G string at the seventh fret and I'm bending that up to nine. Now what I'm gonna do, a little tip for you, I'm just gonna kill it off with my right hand here. Just very gently, you're gonna tap it just here to get rid of that bend so I'm not left with the release. I don't want to hear the release, I just want to hear it like this. Nice and clean as I go to my next note. So bend it up, kill it off with your right hand and then that frees you up to let the bend down without hearing it being let down. Okay, so do the bend. Then we're going to play five on the B string and five on the top E. I'm using my first finger to play those notes. Now we're going to move up into the sliding bit of the scale, the extension of the scale. And for this, I'm going to grab the eighth fret on the B string with my third finger. I'm going to pick it and slide it up to 10. And then my first finger is going to play eight on the top E with a little blues curl. Now a blues curl, in case you haven't heard this before, just like a little tweak right on the end of the note. See, it's just a little bend, but it's kind of, it's at the end of the note. It's not, it's not straight away. Just squeezes the notes to really cool blues effect, which is just a stylistic sort of trait of blues guitar, really. So here's what we've got so far. Okay, then we're going to have a little gap for an one. So what we're doing there, we're playing the tenth fret on the B string. I'm using my second finger for that. You could use your third finger if you preferred, but I'm going to use my second. 
Then we're going to grab the top E at the tenth fret and we're going to bend that up two frets. And then again, kill it off and let it down. Eighth fret on the top E, and we're going to pick that twice with a little blues curl on each of those notes. Then play ten on the B string. Here's that lick slowly all the way through. Right, let's check out lick number two now over the chords. Okay, let's have a look at how we play that lick. Starts off in position one, and then it works its way up into the sliding scale a bit high up on the neck. So starting off on the top E at the eighth fret, I'm playing that note with my first finger. Then I'm playing 8 down to 5 on the B string. Then I'm grabbing this bend which we saw in lick 1. It's a 7th fret on the G string and I'm bending it up 2 frets. I'm killing it off with my right hand like I spoke about earlier. And then I'm playing 5 on the B string and 5 on the top E string. Like that. Now we're going to play 8 down to 5 on the B string. I'm picking those and now I'm going to grab 7 on the G string and I'm going to bend it up. But this time I'm just going to bend it at 1 fret. If it wants to sound like the 8th fret. I'm going to kill it off, let it down and pick it. Pull off to my first finger at the 5th fret. Then I'm going to play the D string with my second finger at the seventh fret. Now I'm using my second finger there because it just makes this little jump here up to the slide a little bit easier. If you would really rather use your third finger, that'll kind of work fine. But I like my second because of this this bit. Getting to the slide is just a bit simpler, really. Because then we're going to play eight on the B string. We're going to pick it and we're going to slide up to ten. So the whole lick is like this. Okay, time for lick number three. Let's have a listen to what that one sounds like. Let's have a look at how we play that one. So I'm starting with my second finger and I'm sliding into the ninth fret on the G string. Then with my first finger, I'm playing the eighth fret on the B string. Back to 9 on the G string, and back to 8 on the B with my first finger. So we get this. So you can see this is also using the extension of the pattern up here, but we're starting off in it. Whereas in the other licks, we kind of start off down here and worked our way up there. So, you know, experiment with doing this, make up some of your own licks, and actually start up in this bit of the pattern. So what we've got so far is that little shape there. Okay, now we're going to pick the 8th fret on the B string. And we're going to hammer on very quickly onto 10. So it just decorates this 10th fret note. We don't really want to hear the 8 very much. Like that. We just want to hear a little snappy kind of hammer on going straight to 10. It's one of these little things. You might think, why bother playing 8? Because we don't really hear it. 
Well, even though it's very short, we actually do hear it. And when you take these little decorative things out you're playing, you do notice they've gone. It just has less colour and less depth. So part of becoming a good blues player is learning to use these very subtle little uh, devices like that. And they really make a big difference to your playing. You'll hear them in all the great players, you know, these little things happening. Anyway, back to the lick. We've got this. So carrying on from there, we're going to pick eight on the B string and then ten on the B string. Then we're going to grab nine on the G string. I'm going to use my third finger for that. And we're going to do this greasy little slide back down to seven. Again, kind of like with the hammer on, we don't really want to hear none. We just want to hear the slide back down. Then I'm going to pick, pick five on the G string. Followed by picking seven on the G, pulling off to five on the G string. Then I'm going to play the D string at seven. So there's quite a lot there. Let me take you th through that bit very slowly. And to finish off, we're going to grab seven on the G string, bend it up. Kill it off with your right hand and play five on the G. Okay, so that's lick number three. Now, what I would suggest you do is learn those scales if you don't know them, learn these licks, and then put on a backing track, and first of all, practice playing these licks round over them, just getting a feel for where in the chord sequence they work. Because the great thing about these three and the reason that I chose them is because they'll work in a lot of different places in the 12 bar blues. You can't go too far wrong. Whereas certain other licks are mainly gonna work at certain points in the chord sequence. So these are really versatile because they'll work almost anywhere over the 12 bar blues. But you need to experiment. Take these licks, take them apart, take the bends out, take all the little bits and pieces that make them up and just really experiment and, and be creative with them and see how you can use them to come up with your own stuff. Because that's what all the great players have done and that's why they sound like them when they improvise rather than just like someone who's learnt a bunch of licks and just spat them all out the same way every time. Experimentation is the key here, it's really, really important. Okay, so just to sum up what we've done in this video, we've had two scale shapes and three licks using those scale shapes. We've also looked and talked a little bit about how you can take those licks and use them to expand your own playing. Now, all these licks are tabbed out in my blues guitar bundle, which you can get by clicking the link under this video. It's got the tab for this lesson and the tab for several other of my lessons on YouTube. So check that out and it will really help you get the most out of this video. So that's really all for me today. If you've found this video useful, please hit like, please subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any comments or requests, then just leave them underneath the video. I'll try to reply to every comment that I get. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.